Hi guys, in this video we're going to learn to use R as a calculator. Um, a calculator on steroids as you'll soon learn. Okay, but for now let's just use this as a calculator. Okay, so here I could just type in some, some numbers. So if I start just typing 5 and hit enter or return, it'll return 5. So I can add 5 to 5. I can subtract 5 from 3. I can multiply 5. Let's do, let's change it up. 5.33 times 2. Times is with the asterisk, right? And finally, to round out these most basic four, I can divide. Okay, I can divide. I can get fractions. 11 divided by 3. I get a whole bunch of decimal places and so on. Okay, so those are the four most basic. Now let's kind of learn to exponentiate. So I want to raise 5 to the third power. 5 times 5 times 5, right? I want to raise 3 to the 1 half power. So notice I put 1 half in parentheses and that'll usually be the case because if I leave it, let's hit enter. If I leave it 3 raised to the 1 half like this. Even reading that gets a little bit kind of confusing, let alone what R is going to do. You see I get a different result even though I intended to get the same thing I got here. I get something different. Well, what's R doing here? Well, it's for, it's using PEMDAS, remember? Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, the order of operations. And it's uh, See, it's doing the exponent first, so it's going to do 3 to the first power, which is 3. And then the only thing left to do is divide. So then it's doing 3 divided by 2. That's how we get the 1.5. So use your parentheses wisely. This is, a, this is a big lesson to come out of this video. Okay, If I want to if I want to um, divide two things, and there's a lot going on in the fraction, for, exa for example, in the numerator, it's 5 squared. So I'm hugging my entire numerator. Then in the denominator, I have, you could even use spaces to make your code even clearer. So divided by, let's say in the denominator, I have 8 times 8 pl uh, plus, let's say, 6, whatever, right? Um, 6.67. Okay. If I do this without putting the entire denominator in parentheses like this, I'll get a different result. So I got to be very clear to R on what I want. If, in fact, this is in the entire denominator, in, in other words, if you're looking at your fraction like this, you got your numerator and your denominator, make an effort to put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator so that the R, there's no confusion on, in the order of operations. Here, it's very clear. It's going to calculate this. It's going to calculate this. Then it's going to divide. Okay. So use your parentheses wisely. Um, some other uh, operations besides uh, exponentiating. Uh, taking the log. So the log. So here's a function, actually. right? Function is kind of like it's got a name. You got to type it exactly how uh, it's supposed to be written. No, it R is cap sensitive, so uh, capital log wouldn't have wouldn't work the same if at all. <clears throat> so this will just take the log, and you you recall this from your algebra courses. So I could take the log of any number, say 35, uh, log of 10. Okay, the argument. So this is an example of a function. Right? And we've seen some functions in previous videos. Okay, so log. In this case, we're not getting too bogged down on logarithms, but looking this rather as an example of a function. Okay, and it takes an argument. So let me abbreviate that arg. So arg1. If it took more than one argument, I would separate those arguments with commas. So let's say arg2. I know, in fact, that log, the log function takes at least two arguments. And the reason why I didn't put it here, and R is smart enough to figure this out, if you leave out certain non-essential arguments, 
from a function, R will use default values. So in this case, in the log function, again, we're not getting bogged down on the log function, just using it as an example. The first argument is, what do you want to take the log of? So I wanted to take the log of 35, okay, arbitrarily. The second argument, very important, separated by a comma, is what base logarithm do you want to take? If you recall, and if you don't, it's fine, but there are different logs you can take. You can take a, a natural log, you could take a base 10 log, you could take a base 2 log. So you, you, this second argument in this particular function specifies to the function which base you want to take. So let's, let's define that explicitly. So by the way, the default value would be natural log. Um, in this particular function. So log of 10 and if I type base I make it very clear to myself and to anyone else reading my code that I'm setting the base argument to whatever. Let's set it to um, 10. Okay. So here I clearly define argument 1 and argument 2. Okay. So the function, I gave the function more information so it's you know gives me exactly what I want instead of leaving it to the defaults. Sometimes we'll leave things to defaults, but it's good to know this. Okay, um, another function that's kind of fits under this umbrella of using R as a calculator is square root. You know that taking the square root, let's say the square root of nine is three, right? Is like raising nine to the one half power. Okay. But because taking square roots is so common, someone's written, you know, a function for it. And it's, uh, this is how we use it, SQRT, that's what it's called, rather. Um, and it takes one argument, and that argument is simply the number that you want to get the square root of. So here we want square root of 9. So same answer, right? Okay? So uh, in this video we saw 1 two functions, two very simple functions, okay? And we're starting to get a little familiar with the idea of functions um, kind of having these parentheses and within the parentheses having arguments. So arg1, arg2, etc. right? And the arguments being separated by commas. And we can think of the arguments as specifications. So we're feeding the function spe specifications so that it can evaluate and return exactly what we want. Okay, so this could be any old function like the log function or uh, many more that we're going to see. Okay, um, so I hope this was helpful. Again, uh, one very important thing to get out of this besides the whole function talk is um, just these basic operations because they'll be combined a lot in different ways. So it's good to learn to use R as a calculator first. Uh, the functions are important and also parentheses management. Remember, for every parentheses you open, eventually you have to close one. And you want to close it, not just arbitrarily, but in the right spot. So it takes some care and some practice. Um, if you don't close the parentheses, I, R will either give you an error or it'll uh, kind of give you this plus sign which is saying hey uh, it's th this kind of thing you're doing here it's still alive do you want to complete it finish it up so it's giving you opportunity to, to kind of continue typing so in this case oh, I, I look back I see oh I forgot to close the parentheses I close it and then it actually it evaluates the function just as if I had typed it right in the first place Okay. Other times you might get an error message, and then in which case you could, you know, hit escape. And uh, let's say I type log with the capital O, uh, error. Okay. So no problem. Okay. Just hit escape and enter and continue. All right. So I hope this this video was helpful. Uh, continue watching. We're going to now uh, apply some of these uh, basic operations to uh, numeric vectors. All right.